My name is Brenda Riley, and um, this is my collection of the Wild Wear uh, by Wild of California. And it was in production from 1941 for sure to 1955. There was some there's some ambiguity whether it started actually in the late 30s. Um, there's not a, a clear timeline, but we know for definite sure it was 1941 that. Um, Max Weil uh, started uh, producing um, different wares. He, it, it started out originally as the California Figurine Company in 1941, and then uh, he changed the name later. And uh, we'll get into the history of Weil wear. But I think it's important for you to know uh, about the, um, or to have an appreciation of the wildware pottery is to have an understanding of the history of the southern or the California pottery history. And it all started, actually goes back to the early uh, Spanish settlers that had come into California and brought with them their brightly colored tiles that were used for roofs, uh, for paving stones, and for sewer pipes. And uh, it wasn't until like the um, uh, statehood in 1848 that it kind of sort of um, got really ingrained into the architecture and more and more potteries uh, grew out from that. And then with that in increased demand, um, they, um, there was the golden age of tile making and art pottery that came along with the arts and crafts movement in um, 1910. And that's when it was sort of like, um, it was kind of like kicked off at that point. But it's, uh, the industry had survived the Great Depression, World War II, and the onslaught of the mass production of the low price um, imports that came later. So it, it's worth discussing that really the origins of California pottery coincided with the onset of the Great Depression. And at that time, particularly in Southern California, with Hollywood um, being such a uh, you know a prominent ec uh, economic uh, you know sort of boom, that um, it was easy for people to you know to have money, and plus they uh, it provided you know means for people to be able to afford this. So um, so it kind of kicked off um, the California pottery. Um, producing uh, period. Um, the most popular pottery during the um, early part of the Depression was J.A. Bauer. And they had produced what they called the color, California Colored Pottery Line. And this coincided, and it, I don't know if some of y'all were in the talk earlier, with the, um, with, um, the phenomenally successful Fiesta Ware and Homer Lawlin line, which was produced, you know, in West Virginia, but they were kind of producing kind of the same colors, and so with the uh, with the popularity of Fiesta, so J. A. Bauer kind of kicked off, and they became uh, he became one of the more popular potteries, and everybody started imitating them because you know everybody wanted to to be successful and they had a lot of adaptations of the same colors and, and kind of styles. Um, so then by the late 30s it, it, it kind of had really kicked off. So um, this and Southern California found themselves in a very favorable position in that they had a lot of the ceramic raw materials that were available to produce all of this pottery. And it was um, it was attainable in the desert right outside of Los Angeles. I think those were dogwood flowers, because then when you go down here to the birch wood, which is kind of a gray background, but you see how they have this streaking, I guess, to make it have like a wood grainy look. So, um, but I, I'm not sure what those flowers are either, so. Uh, I'm not familiar with the flower names. But um, then they also had the mango celadon and the mango gray, um, as well as the mango cream. But noticed that the celadon and the gray have like a red mango 
but the Celadon, um, I mean the mango cream had a green uh, mango. So they changed up the, um, the design a little bit. Even though they're using the same flower, they changed up the coloring based on the background. So um, as far as I know, those are all of the, um, the, the different dinnerware patterns. But, like, um, but they also made, and one of the other things that I, had, I started collecting was um, what they call Ming Tree, which was kind of an Asian background that had it's kind of like a like Mount Fuji in the background, and then they had like a bonsai tree. Uh, but the interesting thing about this design was that the tree leaves, whether they were green or pink, they were raised, and so they had a texture to them. Like you know, like on all the dinnerware, of course, everything's flat. I see. So I have um, a lot of salt and pepper shakers from uh, Shawnee, plus a lot of um, like creamers and um, vases and things uh, from Shawnee. And then Blue Ridge, I have some vases and some plates and cut bowls and a bunch of other things. Um, so I kind of like moved around as far as my pottery collection. But, I mean, y'all are all welcome to come up and look at it and see how pretty it is. But um, I just want you to know that this, this pottery is very durable because it was, it resided in my house in Lakeview that was underwater for two weeks. And it just doesn't look like it took the shine off of anything. So, I mean, it's a very durable, um, um, you know, pottery. Yeah. Do you ever use it? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's um, everything I have I use. I mean, we, we I love to bring it out, and it it's dishwasher safe. I can put it in the dishwasher. <laughs> so don't say that. <laughs> oh look, if it survived Katrina, I think it can survive the dishwasher. They can't survive bleach though. <laughs> no, but I mean, I don't. I usually uh, turn off the heater. So I don't put the dryer on, but you know, I just uh, I, yeah, it goes in the dishwasher and it comes out looking like this. So um, it's a it's a very durable pattern and very um, nice to look at and it does make a, a nice little display. I, I used to have a much nicer cabinet to put it in, but since I've downsized and moved, it's kind of in a much smaller ca cabinet and it's all kind of like scrunched up and piled together. But I used to be able to kind of like lay it out like this, but not anymore. So. Anyway, any you, other questions? Are hand painted or was it? Painted? Yes, they're 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 all hand painted. And that's the other interesting thing, that all of the patterns are hand-painted. So when, if you start collecting, you'll see variations even within the same line. I mean, they're, they're all very similar, you know, in the, in the pattern. But there'll be slight variations of, uh, of the decoration because of, of, of it being hand-painted. Any other? The way in the movies. A long time ago, I think. Well, not not this stuff. I don't, not that I know of. I mean, um, I haven't. I haven't. I think people had to buy it in the in like a uh, department store or you know someplace like that. Are okay. any of them artist signed? Actually, no. But a few of them do have like a um, um, like a. a a number that I guess is is like a, a stamp where they they like they they inspect like an inspection sticker. Okay. Yeah, but there's there's uh, no signature per se on the uh, on the pattern itself. Has anyone done a book on the pottery? No, I I mean because with the number of potteries from Southern California during that time, um, there was one exhibit. In nine, I mean, 2012, at the American Museum of Ceramic Arts on just wildware pottery that I know of. And if I had thought of it sooner, um, I could have gotten, they did produce a catalog of the exhibit, um, but I didn't think of it sooner to even think, well, I didn't think to ask. I just had seen online that they had had the exhibit. And so finally I called them and said, hey, did y'all do a catalog? And they were like, yeah, we did. So 
um, but it, it, I just didn't get it in time for, for this particular talk. So it'll be interesting to see, but there's no like, like book that gives you, you know, detailed descriptions of the, um, of the pottery itself. I mean, I can tell you the sizes and things. I mean, you know, they're pretty significant sizes. Like the, the dinner plate is nine and a half inches. Then the salad plate is seven and three quarter. And I guess would be the bread and butter is five and three quarter. And we have the little bowl with handles. That's a five inch bowl, but six inches to include the handles. And then the small bowl is four and a half inches. Um, and the, the teapots were, were, were much shorter too than the coffee pot. And I don't know how many other, you know, serving pieces they have, but the, if you notice that, um, like this one serving piece has the plain lines, just, you know, with the kind of rounded corners, but then these other ones kind of like have a, a little uh, wavy or indention in them just to give a, a little bit more of a shape. And so there's three different ones with that kind of particular kind of um, design on it. But for the most part, they're all, Maybe, maybe this was a mistake. This could be, yeah. this could be worth something. You know, they forgot to put the, the dent in there. I don't know. But, um, but, uh, yeah. But, um, I heard with you the casserole was the sweetest. It is, it is totally precious. And it, it, it looks really nice, too. That's that scoop Any other questions? Do you think it would be more readily available in the West? Yeah, yeah. I mean, um, I think the West and um, and, and North. Because somebody, who was it, told me, somebody told me recently that they went up to Wisconsin and found a, a lot of the wallware pottery. But for some reason or another, it just does not make it down South. Um, at least, you know, I mean, there, there may be, I think one, one other time at an estate sale, I found one other piece of the bamboo. Um, it was, um, um, I think it was like a little divided plate. It was just, it was a small little thing. And um, that's the only time I've ever seen it anywhere else. I mean, you don't see it in antique shops. You don't see it at the shows. It's just, um, just kind of one of those unique, you know, potteries that just, didn't make it to this area, but I'm sure if we went out west and looked for it, probably hmm. all over. Is it over. that rare? Huh? Is it that rare? No, because they, because like I said, in 1950, they were considered the sixth biggest yeah. manufacturer. I mean, because it was shipped all over the country, hmm. but maybe, I guess because we were closer to Tennessee and West Virginia and all of that was coming down. Because Fiesta, you know, you can't walk into a shop without tripping over Fiesta, you know, but, um, <laughs> But yeah, I mean, and, and even Blue Ridge, I mean, Blue Ridge is everywhere, but um, I mean, I even find a lot of Shawnee pottery here, but um, but this, you, um, you just don't see it. But now y'all can start looking, y'all know what the patterns look like. Uh-huh. About what price would one plate go for? Okay, um, it's interesting because I, you know, I don't really price it since I purchased it all at one time. But while I was doing my research, I did look on eBay, and um, some of the dinner plates were going anywhere from like ten to twenty-five dollars. So you know, like how eBay is; it just depends on the seller. Um, <clears throat> same thing with the other plates, and but they um, they have a tendency though to to group things. So you can, the the only thing is, and, and if you come up here and you pick it up, it, it's very dense, heavy pottery. So you, you're paying more for the shipping than you are for the pottery itself because it is um, kind of a heavy, heavy... Um... So it's best to find it in the shop. <laughs> <laughs> it would be great, but like I said, that's why I haven't added too many other pieces. Like I said, I've added a few. I can't remember, I had over 20 pieces. Well, I think I now have like over 40... Uh, 40 pieces for sure. So I added a couple, and I, I'm, I'm pretty sure that some of them did break in Katrina because the cabinet that I had was kind of like a long cabinet and when it collapsed, 
you know, it all fell, but it uh, and then fell on top of each other. And some some of the pieces did break, but um, and I I think I replaced those and got a few extras. So, but um, well, that's pretty much it. If you don't want to know anything else, okay. thank you. Thank you.